Je prends la comme la voix. Quand on ça. Ça. Good evening everyone, my name is Francie Hebben, I am live from Auckland, New Zealand. It took me a while, something was not working but everything is up and running now. I am originally from Bloemfontein, South Africa. Me and my family moved to New Zealand about 11 years ago. Me, my husband and our three daughters. We settled in Auckland, but four years ago, we moved to a small rural town called Pukekoe, just south of Auckland. In Pukekoe, I am the proud business owner of a small shop called Mama Africa. Now, Mama Africa, in, at Mama Africa, we do a lot of things. We sell South African groceries, we sell budavors and biltong and all the nice stuff that we used to, that we know and that we love and that we miss here in Auckland. Um, also melt, milk tart and cook sisters, don't forget fed cook dough. So we do a lot of things over here. On a Saturday, we play Afrikaans music. We've got a Buddha horse bra outside and we do the booty rolls, everything. When it's rugby time, we wear our proudly Springbok jerseys. And uh, don't forget our New Zealand customers. There's a lot of Kiwi customers that also support this shop very well. Um, the South Africans have introduced them to Biltong, so they know where to find the best Biltong in New Zealand. Uh, we, have, we are a, quite a large South African community here in Pukekohe. I am always so surprised. Once a week there will be new arrivals here in Pukekohe. They would be here for three or four days and uh, start start to work and just become one of us. And uh, so we do, we cry and we laugh a lot at the shop. We, uh, um, it's, some, it, it's more, I find it, it's more difficult for the, the women and the mothers to be away from their family and their loved ones, especially when the husbands start to work and they are alone at home with the children and when life starts to get normal for them then they find themselves they will be quite alone so i always invite them come to the shop we'll drink tea or coffee and we'll cry together and we laugh together and and that is just what we do um there's also a shelf in the shop that i've put up there for and we just put a lot of things there for uh, most most people come here empty-handed only with their suitcases and then they want to start um they want to move in a house and they don't have anything so we've got curtains there we've got house stuff anything that they need is there and they are welcome to take it uh it's for free and so we help one another and that's what i like about the shop um, um the first time that I saw this South African shop. I was four years ago, just when we moved here, I went to town and I saw the small South African shop there. And I went over there and I found in the shop a very English young man and empty shelves. So I was wondering what's happening here. And I talked to a friend of mine and I asked her, what is going on there? I don't see anything happening there. And she said, yeah, the shop has been there for a while. And so we talked about the shop a few weeks later she called me and she let me know the shop is for sale am i interested so i said no we were just talking about that but uh, i was i found myself that i was thinking um about the shop and that it is for sale and uh, one night i woke up and i thought my first thought was with the shop and i said no god just leave me alone i was just thinking about the shop that i didn't mean anything at all and, uh, but then this thought grew and grew and grew. And uh, one day I said, uh, maybe I should just, maybe I must just consider buying the shop. And the one thing led to another thing. And I went to an accountant with a financial statements and I've asked her, have a look here and tell me what to do. And she said, run, 
run as fast as you can, this is not good. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, but that's not what I heard. That's not what God was telling me. And um, I said, thank you. And I left. And uh, at that stage, I was listening to a gospel CD in my car. And this gospel CD is called Manne wat Gloe, Men That Believe. And the song that was playing was called Reik na die Sterre, Reach for the Stars. And I heard them sing. They said, Als is moendlik, as jy gloe, stap net aan met whip in jou oor. Leef met whip in Godse plan. Hou net aan gloe en weet net dat jy kan. All is possible when you believe. Walk with hope in your eyes. Live with hope in God's plan. Keep on believing and, and know that you can. And I knew that shop is mine. I knew that is what I, I knew that was God's plan. I don't know why. I've got, I've got no business background, no nothing. But I said, okay, God, you and I are in this thing together. I will, you, you lead me and I will go. You are in control. I know you know what you were doing because I don't know what I am doing. So there was a lot of this kind of conversations going on. And next thing I find myself behind the counter of Mama Africa. I was very nervous. There was no, there were not a lot of customers. And then I started to worry because I'm only human. And um, I would, um, the one day, I only had $2, $200 in my bank account and I had to buy stock and I was worried. I had, I did not know how will I be able to buy stock. What about the rent at the end of the month and the electricity and everything that goes with the business. And uh, so behind that counter, there was a lot of tears going on there. And uh, um, one night again, while I was worrying, I woke up when I was worrying and I stood up and I went to the living room and I started to pray and I said, God, you wouldn't have given me the shop and want me to lose it. You need to help me now. You've got a plan and I've got a dream. We Again, we are in this together. I will listen. You just tell me what I need to do. And uh, I, so I said, I'm going to sleep now. Tomorrow we will start. I went to bed and I slept. The next morning I woke up and I said, God, you lead, I will follow. Today is the beginning of Mama Africa. And uh, that's what I did. I just did it. I just always made sure that um, my mind is clear and my ears are open so that I can hear his voice when he tells me what to do. Now, every day, so the customers started to come on in and my very lovely pastor and his more lovely wife, Bev, would come into the shop and they would bless me and they would bless the shop. And they would leave and, and, I, was, and I would feel so good. And I was always thinking there's, there's just something about the shop. And, and, but, but the more that I was... Um, in the shop, the more my faith was growing and, and more I was uh, getting matured and um, I started to believe and to look at God in a different way. And uh, um, so customers started to come on in and Kiwi started to get come on in, Russians and everyone just came to the, to, to, came to the shop and uh, so I got to deal with a lot of different people. Sometimes we don't understand one another. They don't understand me. I don't understand them. But we all understand the world built on. And uh, um, also there's some, it's a, the not so friendly customers. So, but God has also helped me with that one. In my shop, I've got a lot of Bible quotes that's hanging all over the shop so that when I come on in, when I unlock the shop in the morning, I see a Bible verse and I say, I'm ready. At the back of my shop, I have got um, 
faith, hope, and love flowers that's all over. I've got the Lord's Prayer in the form of a cross that's also hanging all over. So I am surrounded by God the whole time, the whole day. For me also to remember how, why I am here and how I got the shock. And um, the people that come on in, when they see that, then they just start to talk. And uh, I hear, as I said before, I hear a lot of stories from people there. And it's amazing when they start to tell me what God did in their lives. And they came here with nothing. And uh, now my husband found a job and I found a job. And everything is just going well. Um, my, my company is registered as God's Grace Limited, trading as Mama Africa. And every day when I see the, the words God's Grace, I know it's just by grace that I am still here. Four years later and we are going strong. And it's just every morning when I stop in front of the shop, then I say, thank you, God. Thank you for this little haven that you have given me. It is so nice to be there every day. And it is, I, I never know what is going to happen at my work every day, but I do know I'm looking forward every day to go there because I know who is in control. And that is, I have, I'm, I don't worry anymore about stuff. I, I worry a little bit and I say, God, it's all yours. I do what I can, you do the rest. And it just works. It's just as, as easy as that. And uh, um, I am enjoying the customers. I am enjoying everything that they bring into the shop and even the other people, the, the, the other cultures, they start to understand our culture. And we learn um, them a few Afrikaans words as well. And so they will greet me in my own language. And it's very really nice. I, I like the respect that goes both ways. Not so much when the rugby is always on, but that one is also now sorted. As the Springbok flag will hang outside the shop when the Springboks are playing. And then there is a lot of atmosphere that goes on in the shop. I love that shop. Um, COVID-19. Uh, COVID-19 just happened for me so suddenly. I was under the impression that um, I can be open because I thought I was a, an essential shop. Wasn't the day before COVID 19, a police officer came into the shop and she said, What is my closing schedule for COVID 19? And I said, No, I will be open. She said, No, you're not. I said, Yes, I am. She told me it is changed again. I cannot be open. So I said, Okay, I'll think about that. And um, that I closed the shop the very next day. It just hit me. I can't be open and uh, um, I start to read on the COVID website again all the to do and not to do and essential and not essential so it sounded like I could not be open but and then I just prayed and I said dear Lord you, you, you need to help me I'm hearing and I'm reading there's a lot of small businesses that is not going to make it. But I'm not one of them because you gave me the shop. You made a lot of promises to me. I'm reminding you of your promises. And, uh, um, but still as I'm human, I was still thinking about that and wondering. And uh, um, I had stopped delivered the day before the lockdown. And I had me delivered the day before the lockdown. And those stock are, in the fridges I can't do anything with it and I had and I was praying about that and I said I can't leave it there um, it has to go out but it's locked down what shall I do please help me and a day or two later one of my customers phoned me and she said do I have meat and do I have that they just feel like that I said yes I do I've got a lot of that she said hang on and she's going to phone me back. And she phoned me back and she said, I've got a list of orders for you for all of that stuff. I'm taking everything. 
everything. So I rushed to the shop. I, I put everything. I made up packages for everything. She she's an essential worker. She came later that afternoon. She took everything, and uh, so all my stock was sold during lockdown, and I was not open. And I was just like, I've asked you, God, you did it again. I ask you, and I've explained to you. You know how much you know what's going on in my heart. And again, you have given me much, much more than I have asked for. After all the stock has been sold, I've switched off all my deep freezers and I've switched off one fridge as they were empty now. And then COVID-19 hit me. It's empty. There's nothing going on here. The landlord was so nice and he gave us all 50% rent relief. But come April, no business, how will I pay that 50%? So, uh, same with the electricity and everything that goes on inside the business. And, uh, um, and again, um, I got phone calls from people, um, can I make them packages, and which I did. And then a few, about two weeks ago, the COVID-19, there were some changes again. And I could be open for four hours uh, once a week. And I let everyone know that I'm open for four hours. During that four hours, business was so good. The, the stock that I had on the shelves, the, the pantry stuff, it sold out. And um, at the end of that four hour day, there was enough money to pay my rent for end of April. And uh, so every week that I was open for four days, that very, uh, for, for four hours, that four hours, the next four hours paid the electricity bill. And the next four hours paid this. Now we are in level, level three and I am allowed to be open. And um, I bought some stock and uh, I know that stock will sell because I am not going down. I know it has, it has had a huge effect on the business because I was worried and I am I was open seven days a week. It's now four hours one day a week. But God has provided, and I know I I am I will be one of those small businesses that will survive. The COVID-19 because I believe and I have got faith how um, my business principles biblical business principles and encouragement I talk to God the whole day every day in the shop when I'm alone we have good conversations in there I always ask for wisdom when I enter the shop because you do not know who is going to enter that sh the, shop, the shop and it will stand on the other side of the counter. As I said before, watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth. I'm still working on the facial expressions, but we're getting, we're getting there. I'm getting there. Trust God to answer your prayers. Ask him. Tell him, tell him what you want. Tell him what's going on in your heart. And... Um, uh, Enough funds. I, I, I didn't have, have enough funds to, to uh, do certain things. I just trusted God. I told him, this is what I need. This is what I need to do. I'm believing in you. I believe that you will help. And he did. I had a overdraft. I've got an overdraft on my bank account for the business. I have never used it. Never, never. If the urge is there for me to use, of that, to use that money, I just send up another prayer and I leave it and I keep myself busy with something else. I have learned to be patient. It pays off to be patient. It will work out for the good. I've also learned do what you can do and let God do what you cannot do. It took me a while to understand that one, but I've got it now. Find reliable people to work for you. Trust your instincts. Um, 
I've got casuals that work for me. Um, they work there for pocket money. And uh, um, you just need to, tr to trust your instinct. Uh, I pray them a lot. When they do good work, when I get compliments um, about them from the customers, I always send them messages and I told them what the customers said. So they receive a lot of messages from me, um, um, you know, telling them, well done. And I'm, I'm glad that I have, that you work for me. I am glad that um, I've got you as an employee. Um, I've got Bible verses and, and, and quotes quote in the shop that, um, that I see every day. So, and uh, it puts my spirit up. Spirit up. And, uh, and also, um, people will always remember how you made them feel. So we have, we, we would talk about um, God a lot what he's doing for us in our lives. And I will share some, I always share something about the shop because I still can't believe that I am standing there and it is my shop. So uh, I've got a lot of stories to tell. Um, a Bible verse that um, always comes to my mind when I'm thinking about the shop and everything is Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. The other one that I so like I would, is Psalm, uh, Psalms 18 verse 29. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. I like to say it in Afrikaans because it's... It's my mother tongue, and it just sounds more, more stronger when I say that. But this one is, is my ultimate favorite when i feeling a bit down and everything is not going the way that they're supposed to do. So then, then that's the verse that I will, will say. And um, always remember that God is in control. And uh, yes, and... Uh, Walter is uh, my pastor. He's also, he's got a, a big influence in the way how I think and um, the way how I do business at the shop as well. I don't think he knows that, but here you go, Walter. And um, when him and Ble uh, Bev will come in and uh, say nice things about the shop and bless the shop and and just speak out all this this nice words and and um positive things it, it's 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 amazing for me i can think about that for days and uh um it keeps me going and it, it's a nice feeling when when you hear when people pour their blessings out over you i love blessings when when people say bless you i say oh thank you i grab it with both hands and um never underestimate the power of blessings from other people as well i am going to say before i say goodbye i've got a prayer here that i it's not my own but i'm borrowing it so here we go father in days like this, it's hard to believe that you're actually hearing my prayers. But your word says that you'll never leave me or forsake me. And that you're always listening to the prayers of your children. Thank you for never leaving me. Please help me to use the faith you've given me to believe that you're going to take care of my job and my finances. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. So that was me and Mama Africa. Um, so it's goodbye from Auckland, New Zealand. Bye.